going to do a little medical story time here with you this is not medical advice it's just something that happened to me and and some of you may get a kick out of it some of you may not but i've told you before my grandfather he grew up during the depression he was raised poor he saw milled his whole life logged his whole life he joined the military during world war ii he joined the navy when he was 17 years old and fought in the pacific well one of those times when he was in the pacific in manila he come down with a kidney stone he always told me this story because it always made me kind of sick at my stomach when he'd tell it. And I'd beg him, quit telling me the story, quit telling me. I don't want to hear it as he's telling the story. What would, what happened was he had a kidney stone. And he told me, he said, they just went up there and yanked it and grabbed it out. You know, he said, they used this clamp thing, shoved this thing up in there and pulled it out. He said, it hurt. And I screamed and screamed and it hurt. Well, fast forward a few years, several years from when that happened to him. One day, I, my, my belly button was hurting really bad, like right above my belly button. I'm drinking Pepto-Bismol, trying to figure out what I ate and why I was sick. I'd already had a kidney stone prior to this, and I passed it, right, with no issues. You know, first kidney stone I ever had was probably 19, 20 years old. It hurt, and it come out. I didn't think nothing about this, except for maybe I am just ate something, or maybe my appendix is messing up or something, right? Well, go to the hospital down there. The doctor that's in the hospital working is my family doctor that day. And the first thing she looked at me said, it's a kidney stone. Well, they took me to the CT scan and put some IV fluid in me and put that dye in me. And immediately it showed I had a huge kidney stone that was blocking my, uh, well, not your bladder, but from your kidney to your bladder. It was in between there being blocked. Come back in to the room after that, and she said, we're going to put you in surgery. They're going to take it out. All right. They take me into surgery. I wake up. You know, the nurse comes in there and says, well, once you get up and use the restroom, you can go home. You know, this is around lunchtime the next day. I go to the restroom, start using the restroom, and, of course, blood and clots and everything else is coming out. You know, and I, I, I squeezed it off. I was like, I can't do this. You know, uh-uh. I squeezed it. Made it quit coming out. Well, the nurse come back in. She checked it and said, "All right, you've had a, you've had a, you've emptied your bladder. You can go home now." Well, I go home. By now, it's about 2 o'clock when I get home. About seven or eight o'clock at night, I, I can't use the bathroom. I can't. You know, I've got to urinate really bad, but I can't use the bathroom. I'm sitting there in a the chair and I'm like, "I gotta go to the bathroom." I get up, go to the bathroom, and I stand there, and nothing happens. And it got worse and worse. And I'm covered in sweat, right? I mean, I, you, it looks like you poured buckets of water on me. So I go back down to the hospital. They take me into the ER. They ask me, they realized I'd had surgery that day. And they pretty much said, we're going to give you a catheter. So the nurse, she's being real professional, you know, real polite, real apologetic, you know. And she goes out and gets the catheter, comes back in with it. And she's like, well, I need you to get under, get to put this gown on. I'm laying on my back on, on the gurney, right? I just raised my hips up and just slammed my pants down to my ankles. And I'm like, just do what you've got to do. i got to go to the bathroom, please. Well, she starts inserting it, you know. And I'm like, can I go to the bathroom yet? And she's like, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Don't try to push. Well, she gets it in there and she turns the valve and whatever they do with that thing. It fills up the big bag, you know, the, the nighttime bag they let you sleep with. It fills that up instantly. She cuts it off and it fills up another half of one. Well, then they sent me home with the big bag and a smaller bag, right? The smaller bags for if you had to go somewhere you didn't want to wear the big bag. Well, a week later, I had to go back to the urologist for your checkup, right? Well, the night before, I had the little bag on and it had a long tube on it. Somehow, I had stepped on it and ripped it out. The catheter just come out, right? It hurt. It hurt bad when it come out. Well, I go down the next day, and the doctor's like, well, we got to take the stent out. And I said, no, I done, you know, I done got that out. I told him what happened. He's like, I bet that hurt, didn't it? And I was like, yeah. Now, he couldn't speak real good English, but I could understand what he was saying. It took, you had one of the doctors, you really had to pay attention to what they're saying. He says, well, we still got to get this stent out. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? So I didn't know I had this. It was something that went from my bladder to my kidney. He's like, yeah, we got to get that out. And I was like, okay. Well. He had a pretty nurse with him, and I'm like, oh, you know, embarrassing, right? Here, here, they're going to be digging around up in there and stuff like that. Well, 
he him and his nurse leaves the room and this 80 year old 70 or 80 year old nurse comes back in there and she's 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 the one that's going to do this and get me ready for the procedure right she pulls this clamp out she puts it on it to hold it straight up and a doctor comes back in and i'm like you're gonna knock me out right he said no we're gonna put this gel in you that helps lubricate it and it'll numb it a little bit you're just gonna feel a lot of pressure well he takes this thing out that's got a like a cable with a claw on the end of it shoves it down through there right they at first they pump push this big old needle it don't have the needle on it it's just like the part where the fluid goes it was about that big around about that long full of this gel looking stuff they just squirt all that in you and then they shove that thing in there right well he's digging around trying to get it and i'm cussing i'm like hurry the f up what the f are you doing you know you mf -er. i'm it's hurting right well, finally, he grabs it and yanks it out. And when he yanks it out, to this point, I still don't know what it is. I've never heard of it or seen it. He yanks it out, and this thing's about 18 inches long. But as soon as it clears, immediately start using the restroom, right? All over him, <laughs> all over the end of the bed and everything. Well, he goes out. I get dressed. I go out the door. And the, the lady at the reception's office, or little office there is saying, sir, sir, we still need you. I said, just call me later. I'm going home the hell with this type of situation. Well, I go outside. There's a guy standing there smoking. Now, he sees me. I'm sweating. He says, are you the one that was in there yelling? I said, yeah. And he asked me what they did, and I told him. He threw his cigarette down and said, the hell with this. I ain't going to the doctor. And he walked to the parking lot with me and got in his car and went home just like I did. Well, when I got home, I was sitting there talking to my grandpa, and I'm like, you know what? You remember that story that you always told me? It made me sick in my stomach. He said, yeah. I said, well, because you, I had to have this done. They, I said, they still do this same, the same way they did it in the 40s. They're in there just jamming stuff up in you, yanking stuff out. And he just, he started laughing. I mean, almost rolling in the floor laughing. You know, it was funny to him. And I said, don't ever tell me that story again, because now I have my own. Some of you are going to be like, what does this have to do with prepping, right? Well, it has a lot to do with it. Once SHTF happens, you're going to have to deal with this stuff on your own. Like today, we went out to yard sale and to try to find some stuff to do a prepping on a cheap video, and I found some. I kept getting dizzy and sick at my stomach. My neck was hurting. I was hurting from my belly button all the way up to my head, and I'm like, what? what's going on here? I don't feel good. I mean, I'd pick stuff up, feel like I was going to fall over or pass out, and i come home, and I'm like, Goodness, I gotta lay down for a minute. And I have one of them massagers, you know, like the massage gun. It's over there. I'm not gonna pick it up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's the, the massage gun. I'm using it on my neck and on my upper body. I'm like, goodness, I'm hurting. It was like a big muscle cramp all, all the way from my belly button up. Well, right under my sternum, I put it right there and started rubbing and it started hurting bad. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So I stopped and then I laid there a minute and then I started hurting inside my left hip towards my bladder. I was like, oh, is that what that is? I get up and go to the restroom about 45 minutes to an hour after this. Kidney stone, kidney stone come out. And the, the bad thing about this is from all my MRIs and stuff I've had on my spine, I know they've told me I've got anywhere from 9 to 11 in my left kidney to the same amount or more in my right kidney. So I, I've, I'm in for it when it comes to the kidney stones when they decide to come out. But the point of this is, during the SHTF, when there's no medical service out there, you're going to have to deal with this yourself. And honestly, I don't know how to tell you to deal with it. I mean, I don't. All I do, if anybody's around me, they know I drink over a gallon of water a day. I mean, that's just the way I am. I drink a whole gallon of water or more a day. And I try to keep my kidneys flush because I know I have that many kidney stones. But when they hit you, they're going to come out or they're going to get hung. So, I mean, I don't know how to tell you to treat them. I thought some of you might get the kick out of the story about what happened to my grandpa and then, what, 50 years later, the same, they're st they were still doing the same way to me that they did to him in Manila in the 40s, right? But there's a little medical story, it's a little long video, I'm sorry for it, but keep your head on the swivel, be aware you're surrounded at all times, protect yourself and your family at all times. At that moment, you're the only person that can do it. Guys, stay safe and, you know, SHTF happens. You're going to have to be able to handle some stuff on your own. I don't think I'm going to be going by no claw and clamp, though. I can tell you that right now. No, I, no, I can't deal with that. <laughs>
Y'all stay safe and keep prepping.